Next, I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was dressed in a cloud with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun, his legs like columns of fire, and he had a little scroll lying open in his hand. He planted his right hand, his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and shouted in a voice as loud as the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, seven thunderclaps sounded with voices that spoke. With the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up the things the seven thunders said. Do not write them down. Then the angel I saw standing on the sea and on the land lifted his right hand toward heaven and swore by the one who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it. There will be no more delay. On the contrary, in the days of the sound from the seventh angel, when he sounds his shofar, the hidden plan of God will be brought to completion, the good news as he proclaimed it to his servants and the prophets. Next, the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the scroll lying open in the hand of the angel standing on the sea and on the land. So I went over to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and eat it. They will turn your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. And in my mouth it was sweet as honey, but after I had swallowed it, my stomach turned bitter. Then I was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. I was given a measuring rod like a stick and told, Get up and measure the temple of God and the altar, and count how many people are worshiping there. But court, the, but the court outside the temple, leave that out. Don't measure it, because it has been given to the nations, and they will trample over the holy city for 42 months. Also, I was given power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, dressed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two menorahs standing before the Lord on the, of the earth. If anyone tries to do them harm, fire comes down from their mouth. It consumes their enemies. Yes, if anyone tries to harm them, that is how he must die. They have the authority to shut up the sky so that no rain falls during the period of their prophesying. Also, they have the authority to turn the water into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. When they finish their witnessing, the beasts coming up out of the abyss will fight against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the main street of the great city whose name, to reflect its spiritual condition, is Saddam and Egypt the city where the Lord was executed on a stake. Some from the nations, tribes, languages, and peoples will see their bodies for three and a half days not permit the corpses to be placed in a tomb. The people living in the land rejoice over them. They celebrate and send each other gifts because these two prophets tormented them so. But after three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them. They stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. Then the two heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here! And they came up into heaven on the cloud. All their enemies watched them. In that hour there was a great earthquake, and a, ten, a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake. The rest were awestruck and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. See, the third woe is coming quickly. The seventh angel sounded his shofar. There was a loud voices in heaven saying, 
the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom, and our Lord and his Messiah, and he will rule forever and ever. The 24 elders sitting on their thrones in God's presence fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We thank you, Adonai, God of heaven's armies, the one who is, who was, that you have taken your power and have begun to rule. The nations raged, but now your rage has come. The time for the dead will be judged. The time for renewing your servants, the prophets, and your holy people, those who stand in awe of your name, both small and great. It is also time for the destroying of those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God in heaven was opened, and the ark of the covenant was seen in his temple. And there were flashes of lightnings, voices, peals of thunder and earthquakes, and a violent hail. Now there was a great sign was seen in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun under her feet, the moon, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and about to give birth, and she screamed in agony and labor. Another sign was seen in heaven. There was a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven royal crowns. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of heaven and threw them down to the earth. It stood in front of the woman about to give birth so that it might devour the child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child. The one will rule all the nations with the staff of iron. But her child was snatched up by God in his throne. And she fled in the desert where she was replaced and prepared by God so that she could be taken care of for the 1260 days. Next, there was a battle in heaven. Machel and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But it was not strong enough to win so that there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, serpent, also known as the devil, and Satan, the adversary, the deceiver of the whole world. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now you have come God's victory, power, and kingship, and on the authority of his Messiah. Because the accuser of, his brother, of our brothers, who accuses them day and night before God, he has been thrown out. They defeated him because of the lamb's blood, because of the message of their witness. Even when facing death, they did not cling to life. Therefore, rejoice, heaven, you who, you who live there. But woe to you, land and sea, for the adversary has come down to you. And he is very angry, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that had been, he had been hurled down to the earth, he went in pursuit of the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she could fly to the place in the desert where she is taken care of for a season and two seasons and a half a season, away from the serpent's presence. The serpent spew water like a river out of his mouth after the woman in order to sweep her away in the flood, but the land came to her rescue. It opens its mouth and swallowed up the river which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. The dragon was infuriated over the woman and went after to fight the rest of her children, those who obey God's commands and bear witness to Yeshua. Then the dragon stood on the seashore. 